okay good morning dear conference once again and we are now on the second session on suruji simon suruji father clement is going around distributing pictures of suruji with relics so if you have never seen brother simon suruji now you have a picture to take with you while you settle down i just say two or three small things before i begin the the talk or the presentation first you will find a longer article on suruji more substantial in the uh, documents uh, in the sharing that father clement has put up uh, on the gmail sb2018 and so on you will find there among the documents a longer article on suruji for those who want i will try to speak only for half the time allotted and after that you have time for discussion in groups you have a three page handout in your in your yes in your folder that might help you those are the three main points that i want to say but i thought we could see some of the photos of suruji and of the holy land and the third thing i want to say is from what i know brother suruji had only two jackets only two jackets you will see him usually clothed in the jacket one of them was hijacked to a salesian novitiate in africa and it is there a whole jacket not a small piece like you have here the whole jacket is in the simon suruji novishet in shunyani in ghana and since we could not take the jacket we brought the novice master father silvia roja is a great devotee of simon suruji and we are very happy to have him in the department of formation so father silvio we are happy to have you even if we don't have the jacket okay so this is uh, suruji okay uh, can we go ahead please before zatti and sandor there was suruji we have said that already wonderful brother salesian born in nazareth lived briefly in bethlehem and the rest of his life in a place called bet jamal in the holy land okay so a few things about his early life in nazareth and bethlehem but before that suruji was declared venerable in 1993 okay he is still venerable why is he still venerable and why has he not gone forward because no one prays for a miracle all that is needed now is a miracle everything else all the work has been done why does no one pray for a miracle because people have forgotten we have forgotten simon suruji with suruji along with suruji two other women of the holy land were declared venerable they are both saints today suruji remains where he is and the people of the holy land say you salesians you have forgotten suruji so dear brothers dear confreres priests and brothers today we must remember suruji and i request you to begin praying to spread this the, the name of this wonderful salesian brother okay so suruji was born as i said in nazareth in 18 77 this is a picture i can you can see it vaguely nazareth in 1894 for those of you who have gone to the holy land nazareth is no longer like that it is a large arab city okay suruji born to arab christian parents in the turkish empire the ottoman empire very different from what it is now nazareth is now part of israel a completely arab city in israel arab means part christian and part muslim let's go forward this is the little church in which suruji was baptized why do i show you a picture of this church this is supposed to be built on the place where there used to be the synagogue of nazareth the synagogue in which we believe jesus proclaimed fulfilled the prophecy of isaiah the spirit of the lord is upon me okay and then after some time they tried to stone him this is said to be the place of the synagogue 
as Ruji was baptized there. Let's go ahead. Siman was unfortunate to lose both his parents at a very early age. Father at the age of three, mother a few years later. Eventually, he ended up in an orphanage founded by a priest of the Latin Patriarchate called Antonio Belloni. And this is a picture of Belloni. Belloni is practically the founder of our work in the Holy Land because he had begun a congregation called the Holy Family Congregation. And eventually, he went to Don Bosco and asked that to join the Salesians. The two congregations were fused. Anyway, Siman began, he went to the orphanage founded by Belloni in Bethlehem. Let's go ahead. This is a picture from the 1890s of the orphanage of Bethlehem. If you go to Bethlehem, I hope you do go. Please don't forget to visit the Salesian house, the provincial house in Bethlehem. It is largely this building. In the Holy Land, things last a long time. A hundred years is not a long time. This is today our technical school and the provincial house, okay? The sister's house is that one there, but the sisters have gone away, uh, FMAs, but the house is still there, okay? Let's go ahead. What did Suruji do, the young boy Suruji in Bethlehem? He learned trades, tailoring, baking. This is a photo from those years of the tailoring workshop and Bethlehem, as you know, means the house of bread. So bread is important in Bethlehem. The Salesians still have a famous bakery and people buy bread. Anyone who eats Salesian bread is called Salesian in Bethlehem. You know, you introduce yourself in Arab, Anna Salesian, and they will say, I also am Salesian because I eat the bread. No? Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, some, a few pictures, a few notes about Simon Suruji's early, um, his vocation and his early formation. Let's go ahead. In 1892, Simon was sent to the house of Benjamal. Father Belloni had bought places in Bethlehem, Kremisan, Benjamal, Nazareth. All of the five places in the Holy Land Four of them were bought by Father Belloni. Je the, the house in Jerusalem belongs to the Holy See, and we were asked to occupy it, not to use it. But Siman was sent in 1892 to Bet Jamal. Bet Jamal comes from the word Bet Gamal. It is supposed to be the house, the property of Gamaliel, the teacher of St. Paul. Okay? So we believe that this is a very special place, the house of Gamaliel, where we believe St. Stephen was buried after being killed, stoned in Jerusalem. His body, according to the Acts of the Apostles, was carried out of Jerusalem and buried somewhere. We believe he was buried in this house of Gamaliel, Bet Shemal. Surji is there. 1892, the Salesians have already arrived. In 1891, 25 brothers and fathers came to the Holy Land and the congregations were joined together. And this is important, but we just want to know that Sruji, attracted by the Salesians, asked to join the Salesians and was accepted as an aspirant. Let's go ahead. This is a note from the house archives of Bethlehem. Simon Sruji, etc., born, entered, admitted as an aspirant, accepted as a novice, lay brother Baker. Okay, date of birth mistaken. Okay, let's go ahead. This is a view of the house of Bejamal in the 1890s, the late 1890s. Most likely, Siman or Simon did his novitiate in this house. Things are not very clear, you can imagine. Okay, but let us say this is a view of the house. This house still exists. Once again, if you go to the Holy Land, some of you go regularly, I'm sure you have seen this beautiful house of Bechaba. Let's go ahead. Immediate profession for, um, immediate preparation for the first profession at the formation house of Kremisan. And I believe there might be some here who have also done their formation in Kremisan, okay? 
uh, you can see the clerics in their cassocks. Uh, we cannot see Simon here, but this is just for you to have an idea of the place. Let's go ahead. The formula of first profession signed by Sruji. I, the undersigned, etc. It's a very simple formula of profession, and this is it. First profession, 31st of October, 1896. Let's go ahead. And this is uh, from the register of brothers in the provincial archives. Details, once again, about Simon Sruji. Something like this we still keep in our provincial archives. Please go ahead. And so here we have the simple life of Simon Sruji. First profession, 1896. Perpetual profession, 1900. And the rest of his life in Bechamal. Today I want to speak to you about three points which you recognize very well. Sruji, servant of the young and of the poor. Sruji, prophet of fraternity, the man of community. Sruji, mystic in the spirit. In short, Sruji, the Salesian religious brother. And as someone said already this morning, it's wonderful to see brothers like Zakti and Sruji so deeply aware of their identity, of the whole extent of their identity. Salesian consecrated brother. Okay, so the first point, Sruji as servant of the young and of the simple people living around Bechamal. Let's go ahead. In his early years, as you can imagine, Sruji was appointed assistant of the boarders. And who were these boarders? Many of them were extremely poor boys, many of them orphans from the Armenian genocide. So many of these boys were accepted by the Salesians. They had seen their fathers and mothers being killed in front of their eyes. And Sruji was their brother assistant. What is remarkable is that this young man had an instinctive understanding of the preventive system. And I want to stress this. No? Siman Sruji is a Salesian educator. Truly, as we said this morning of Zati, educator and pastor. We have these testimonies. This is a, in rather small uh, font, but they are testimonies of the first one is of one of his past pupils, remembering Suruji in later years. And the past pupil says, I knew many fathers and brothers in Bechamal. They were all good. But there was no one like Suruji who distinguished himself for his goodness. Many other testimonies like this from his past pupils. A man who was able to touch the hearts of the boys. And he was not just a good Salesian brother. He could also exercise fraternal correction. I think it was a priest confrere who was harsh with the boys. And we find Simon Sruji telling the priest confrere, they are small, these boys. They are orphans. We must be their parents, helping them, correcting them when they make mistakes, but never offending them. We must educate them using neither rod, nor hands, nor even harsh language. A small little insight, but it gives you an insight into the, the capacity of the simple brother to practice the preventive system. Let's go ahead. One of the pictures of those early days, boys, Salesians, and others, you can see that they are digging something. In those days, the Salesians, as always Salesians, they wanted to extend their building. And when they began digging, as happens in the Holy Land, they found some ruins. They ha that happened to be uh, the mosaics of a 5th century church, a Byzantine church, which they discovered eventually was the church, a church dedicated to St. Stephen. Eventually, archaeological excavations were conducted, uh, studies were done, and uh, not everyone accepts it, but many people, many scholars believe that this was the place where St. Stephen was buried. Okay? Anyway, the Salesians found that place and built a church there. This is just a picture from those days. Another picture, conference and borders with the Armenian bishop. Uh, 
I cannot spot Suruji here. Can you? Okay, whatever. One of the pictures. Here, this, here he is very clear. Suruji preparing youngsters for First Communion. So here he is with his uh, borders that he prepared for First Communion, 1934, 1942. You can see him there getting old already. Let's go ahead. So educator and pastor among the boys, the boarders in the house, but also educator and pastor in the neighborhood. Today, Bejamal is a beautiful piece of property next to a very strongly vibrant, growing Jewish town called Bet Shemesh. Bet Shemesh is a biblical name, but this is the new city of Bet Shemesh, full of Orthodox Jews. You know, we have great pressure from them. But in the days of Simon Suruji, uh, this area was very poor and completely Muslim. So our house was surrounded by Muslim villages. In order to reach out to the population, the community began an olive press, or they put the olive press and the flour mill at the service of the villagers. They also began a small dispensary. Suruji was put in charge of all three, olive press, um, the flour mill, and the dispensary. Soon, the sick began flocking to him. This is so, so amazing, just like Zati, you know? They began flocking to him, and the Salesians would get doctors from nearby towns every week, maybe, every month, but the people preferred to go to Suruji. They said, in the hands of this man is the power of God. And these are Muslim villagers. They respected him tremendously. They said, Suruji is tamam, perfect. When he died, they said, only one thing was missing. He wasn't Muslim. After Allah, Suruji. And he in turn would say, take the name of Jesus. No, Jesus is the healer. Pray to Our Lady, Siti Maryam. You know that uh, our Muslim uh, brothers and sisters revere Jesus as a prophet and Mary, his mother. It's interesting to see what the Quran says about Jesus and Mary. So this humble Salesian brother was able to lead his neighbors to take the names of Jesus and Mary. Uh, I want to make a small note here because it helps us understand the, mm, the, 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 the nature, the, 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 um, the heroicity of, of Sruji. We must remember that Christians in the Holy Land do not usually have good feelings towards their Muslim neighbors. It's not easy for them. They have lived under Muslim domination for centuries. So usually it's difficult for a local confrere to, to work well with, with the Muslim uh, neighbors. And this makes Simon Sruji's apostolate even more remarkable. This man not only worked with his Muslim neighbors, he loved them. He believed they were equally children of God. And he was an exemplification, I think, of the article 95 that we quoted this morning. No? Immersed in the cares of the pastoral life, the Salesian learns to meet God through those to whom he is sent. Siman learned to see God and meet God in these poor people who were coming to him with great faith. Let's go on now to a series of photos from those years. Please go ahead. This is a photo of the um, olive press and the mill. Uh, we had an agricultural school that in its time was the best in Palestine. The British government, which was there in those days, gave us the award for being the best agricultural school in its time. Today, of course, we can't do anything because we don't have, the, the Israelis will not come to us, okay? Let's go ahead. A view of Kremizan. The dispensary was built somewhere towards the left at the entrance gate. Next. Please go ahead. This is a view of the dispensary. Iman Suruji was, of course, not in any way trained to run the infirmary. He was helped by a Salesian sister. As you know that, uh, you know the Salesian sisters worked with us for many years in the Holy Land, living in one part of the house in Kremisan, 
uh, in uh, Beit Jamal and in Bethlehem. You can see Suruji faintly there standing uh, at the door of the dispensary. Next. Here he is in his white doctor's coat and the people started calling him Hakim, doctor. Next. Uh, I think the largest number of patients were women and children and you can see some of them here, poor villagers, Suruji down there with the, with the cap and for those who couldn't come up because they were tired or too weak or too embarrassed to come, after finishing his work he would go down to the village quietly and, and treat people. Let's go ahead, next. So this is Suruji, a small man built to obey rather than to command and it was this man who became master. People called him Hakim, people called him Mualem, master, master Suruji and this is the paradox. No? We can become masters only if we first learn to live as disciples. Suruji was a missionary disciple. Next. And I want to say this also, Suruji was not the only one working with the villagers, the Muslim villagers. All the confreres in the community, we need to say, had good relationships with the villagers. But the ones who really had a profound involvement in the lives of the villagers were the Salesian brothers. And this is remarkable that Suruji was one of many who were deeply involved especially brothers were deeply involved in the lives of villagers around him. So it does not matter what work we have. Our mission is not our work. Our mission consists of being signs and bearers of God's love to the young. Dear conference, this impresses me always, something that Father Chavez used to say very often. Our mission is not our work. Nowhere in our constitutions we are defined as working for young people or for simple people. Our mission is described in terms of being signs and bearers of God's love to the young. If our mission is working, at some point we will come to the end of our mission when we cannot work. If our mission is being signs and bearers, I think it continues. It continues even when we are sick, even when we might not be able to do any work because it is a question of manifesting what is there within. Let's go ahead. So, Sruji, the prophet of fraternity. Here also we have a few uh, interesting things to say. I, it, I told you that in 1891, 25 brothers, fathers and sisters came over from Italy uh, to, to fuse the congregation of the Holy Family. Holy Family, Salesians coming together, now all Salesians. But you can imagine when 25 people come to a small congregation that probably was of the same number. No? Things were not easy. The relationships were not easy between local confreres and people coming from uh, another land far away. It was in this situation that Suruji began his early formation. About many of the confreres on both sides, there were many things that the superiors had to say. Don Rua, came not once but twice to try to calm down the situation. Don Rua has left his testimony about Sruji. About Sruji, no one speaks badly. Don Rua and every provincial that comes after him, we keep on see, we keep on hearing them say about Sruji, this man is exceptional. It is said that, uh, Don Rua said of Sruji, this man is a saint, take care of him but maybe there is not enough evidence to, to establish that, that point. This much is clear. Sruji, in a very difficult community situation, learned to be a brother to all. And here he is a challenge to all of us. All of us, we are proud to be who we are from the culture that we come from, um, from we belong to our nations, and it is right that we are proud. But Suji also shows us how we can still be brothers across cultures. Here we see him uh, with some other confreres, both local and, and European. In the First World War, you can imagine the tensions emerged again. 
And this time, some of the local confreres, the Arab confreres, tried to enlist Suruji uh, in the cause. And once again, we find Suruji gently maintaining his independence. His biographer says this was probably the greatest trial in his life, community life. Okay? But Suruji knew how to be brother. All the testimonies we have speak about him always as with this ability to be a brother. And it is wonderful that from that community, it is Sruji who has been recognized as, as worthy of the altars. Let's go ahead. This is the note from Rua. There was a sort of correspondence between uh, Rua and Sruji because they met twice when Rua came to the Holy Land. And here we find on Rua saying, Dearest Sruji, I have received your letter. I congratulate you on your willingness to serve the Lord in his holy house. I see that you are happy. Courage, continue like that. I, in my turn, wish you a happy Easter, most affectionately, and so on. Rua. Let's go ahead. Another picture of those years with the youngsters looking very happy. And one of them behind, perhaps the one with the cap, is the canonical visitor, the provincial, making his visitation. Suruji is down there. All the others seem to be rectors, and here is Suruji among the rectors of the little um, area or delegation of, of the Middle East. Let's go ahead. Here he is with his Arab confreres in Bethlehem for a retreat in 1931, right down there, Suruji. Let's go ahead. Here he is again with uh, a Polish confrere and an Italian uh, Salesian brother. Maybe this is one of the jackets, one of the two jackets. Next, and here another, this is a, a photo from Bet Jamal when the Italian confreres were, were put into the, the, the camp by the British and the, the ones who remained were largely Arab and perhaps others Polish and so on. This is a view of Suruji's room and we must, this is a well-known incident, no? Twice Suruji was elected to go to, to Italy. The first time for the beatification of Don Bosco and the second time for the canonization. The first time there was a confrere who was sick and Suruji said, I will stay to look after this confrere, send someone else. The second time they say the same confrere was sick again. He was not so sick, but he wanted Suruji to stay. <laughs> so Suruji said again, I, I let someone else go. No? This kind of simple little generosity on the part of Suruji. Let's go ahead. So. This is, uh, these are some pictures from the time of the beatification of uh, our Don Bosco. And we just remember Suruji renouncing his trip to, the, to, to Italy on these occasions. Next. Another incident that we need to remember. Uh, during the time of the British mandate, one of the rectors of Bet Jamal was murdered by the Muslim villagers. He was suspected of being a spy for the British. So when he went out for confession somewhere, they caught him and killed him. Next, a few days later, one of these young men involved in the killing came to the dispensary, Suruji's dispensary. And the sister recognized him and said, brother, this is one of them. Let's report him to the police. And Suruji, with this wonderful reply, sister, our job is to do good. We have to forgive. Let him go. The police have their own ways. He will probably be caught. But we, on our part, we should only do good. And so the man vanished in the darkness. You can imagine that the conference of the house also gave trouble to Suruji for being so generous and so and so on. But Suruji, this was the kind of man. He had learned to forgive. And it was right because he was living in the house of St. Stephen in this place where we believe St. Stephen was buried. No? The, the words of St. Stephen, which are the words of Jesus on the cross. Next, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. It could not be otherwise with Suruji. He had learned his lesson well. Next, here we have uh, the, the finding of the, the, the remains of the Byzantine church of St. Stephen. Next, 
and this is the new church that is that was built by the Salesians. If you go there, you will see these and many other um, murals, paintings on the wall, St. Stephen being stoned and the body being carried by, probably led by Gamaliel to this Petchamal and so on. Let's go ahead. And the third point, Suruji, mystic in the spirit. But the Janni Kaputa, who is the vice postulator of the cause of Simon Suruji, has recently published the writings of Suruji. We have found Suruji's diaries which contain his projects of life, or what we used to say in those days, we used to call them the retreat resolutions. No? And it is remarkable to see the kind of person who emerges from here. A man who is deeply aware of the blessed trinity and of his Salesian consecrated vocation. This is from his diary. The acts of the religious, even if small and simple, are precious and accepted by God when done to please and give glory to God. How happy and blessed I am for being consecrated body and soul to God. How much I must do to be pure and chaste like an angel in his sight. How much I must be careful not to stain in the least my soul and my body, temple of the Holy Trinity. Dear Confess, this is remarkable for a man who was not educated formally. Deep awareness of the Trinity and of his own consecrated vocation. So Suruji comes across to us not just as a good Samaritan, but as one who, had, who lived his faith and his vocation. Let's go ahead. And now you find a series of slides containing excerpts from the diaries of Suruji. Uh, I will never complain about hardships and unpleasant things. Um, I want to be very careful to do everything out of obedience. Next, we see him talking about keeping all his accounts well, keeping his books well. Let's go ahead. It seems he had learned even to write Italian. He writes Arabic and he writes Italian, both. Okay? And so these are what you will find in the diaries of Suruji. I will not go through all of these for you now. Let's go ahead. Okay, some more, some more things from his diaries. Personal plan of life. Next, one more. And then the last years. Okay, uh, let's, let's go ahead to the next slide. This is from his, from his sister, uh, or a letter to his sister. Suji had gone to Father Belloni's orphanage. His sister had been put into an Anglican orphanage. She became Protestant. And this was one of those causes of great suffering for Suruji. Kept on writing to her, come back, and so on. But this is one of his last letters to his sister, saying, talking about himself, I am ill. I think that the end of my pilgrimage is not far away, since I have breathing difficulties, heartache, and little strength. All this tells me, get ready to, to, to meet God. Next. Suruji lived all his life in this one house of Bechamal. And we'll say, wow, no, simple. You live in the same house, you don't move, you don't have any obediences. But there's a testimony from one of the provincials of his time about the, the value of the fact uh, that Suruji lived in Bechamal all his life. It seems that Bechamal was only for the donkeys. Even the practical trainees would run away from Bechamal. It was in this kind of house that Sruji lived all his life. When we understand the context, simple things become meaningful, okay? So it looks like it was not so easy. And our Sruji spent his whole life there without ever changing and without asking for a change. Next. Last picture of Sruji, the last passport photo, and this is what we have in, the, in many of the pictures that that have been distributed. Okay. Next. His tomb in the crypt of the church of St. Stephen. So, the, so Suruji is buried there in Benjamal. Next. I said this already. After the funeral, one of the Muslims said, what a pity Suruji is Christian. If, a, if he were a Muslim, we would make him one of our holy men. And I think this is unique in the, in the history of canonizations. At the process of canonization, there were Catholics, of course, who gave their testimony. 
Orthodox Christians from Nazareth, but also many Muslims who gave their testimony uh, about Sruji. And this is wonderful. I think the time has come for Sruji to become more visible. In this moment, when the world and the church in its own way is facing a particular moment of interaction uh, with the world of Islam, Sruji is a great example of the dialogue of life. There are many other figures like him. Many of you have heard of Christian de Charge, uh, extraordinary figure uh, in the dialogue with Islam. And uh, Father, Father Franz, who was murdered in, um, in Syria some years ago during the conflict with the ISIS and so on. No? Uh, Paolo Dall'Olio from, from Italy, who is still missing and perhaps he's dead. He walked over to the ISIS to dialogue with them. Suruji is one of these people who show us a way to remain fully Christian and yet to show the merciful face of the Father to people who cannot call God Father. Our Muslim brethren cannot call God Father because they think it means, it implies having a mother. So God, you know, sex in God and all that, no. So no father. But Suruji is one of those people who showed the merciful, the fatherly face of God to his Muslim neighbors. Next. Something written on the gravestone by Father Forti. He calls Simon Suruji the conchitadino di, di Gesù, his, the country cousin, we can say, uh, Jesus' country cousin coming from Nazareth. Next. And the decree of uh, venerability on in 1993, signed by John Paul II. Next. And Simon Suruji, mystic brother and servant, uneducated, deeply aware of his Salesian consecrated vocation, profoundly holy with an instinctive grasp of the system, educator and pastor everywhere, a man of communion, prophet of fraternity, humble witness to brotherhood. I said this already. The sign and bearer of God's love, even to his Muslim brothers and sisters. Next. And this is a prayer that perhaps we can recite together before we break up into our groups. Uh, prayer to Simon Sruji. Let's say it together. If you can read it from where you are. Simon, you spent your Salesian life pouring the balm of God's merciful love upon afflicted bodies and souls as a minister of healing and reconciliation. Look to our distressed humanity today, especially in the Middle East. Intercede for us with God that we too, imitating St. Stephen and Don Bosco, may be signs and bearers of the love of God to young and poor people everywhere. And in so doing, we may attain the perfection of our Christian and Salesian vocation. Amen. Next, various pictures of Suruji. Next, Bet Jamal as it is today. I had only this very bad picture of of the house as it is now. It's a lovely house, okay? It's much better than what you can see. And thanks to Father Gianni Caputa, most of the pictures are from him and the slide program, of course, is pirated and worked upon from him. So we remember also Gianni Caputa today, vice postulator. And once again, dear conference, don't forget, let's pray uh, through the intercession of this great uh, confrere of ours in the formation department Whenever we have problems, we turn to Sruji. And in all the little things, he always comes to our aid. We have not dared to ask him for the big things yet, but we, someone needs to have the courage to ask him for some, if God so wishes, one miracle to push him up to greater visibility in the church and in the world. Thank you. And now you have time for your discussion in groups. It would be nice if you can report the discussion, but there is not, not going to be an assembly in which there will be time for sharing what you do. So please send. It would be nice if you can send the reports to Father, um, okay. uh, Father Silvio. Silvio, and I think you want to say something about yeah. the discussion. Yeah. Well, give thanks to Father Ivo, his passion and. Uh, Uh, the remote control is working. So we have the picture of Simon Sruji in our hands. Now, before we go to the groups, we listen to a witness of Brother Obed. 
FIN Manila province, who asked his family to pray for the healing of his brother who was in coma for many days. The presumed miracle was already examined by more than eight medical doctors from the Philippines and also from the Vatican. The process is going on. So when we listen to Brother Obed, we may get some hint. What does it mean to hang on on the intercession of our saints? After this short video, instruction for the groups. First uh, of all, this vocation of the lay brother, I discovered this when I was still a seminarian. And I, I think I, I believe from the beginning that I have this gift of, uh, you know, entering to anybody, to people, with a joyful atmosphere that I can give also a light moment to, to any individual or groups, especially to young people that uh, I still persevere even now as a Salesian brother. And I see to it that uh, this vocation that I have received from the beginning, I nurture it also with the help of the people, especially the, the young whom I serve at the moment. Yes, uh, as a Filipino, my model is a Filipino lay brother. You know him is uh, Brother Elmer Rodriguez. I was still a seminarian in Canlubang when we met these brothers from, from Paranaque, and one of them is Brother Elmer, to the point that uh, I, I was inspired by his life also and his dedication to the poor. And uh, really, I was inspired even in his death. I realized the tremendous amount of, of the young people who gathered to thank him. And for me, I was really inspired by his life of, because of his simplicity and humility. Yes, definitely when I was uh, in Rome, I was told that my brother was hospitalized and then after three days was rushed to, to the ICU, intensive care unit, because of, he was in coma. And since then I asked the whole members of the family, I was still here in Rome, I called them to pray through the intercession of Blessed Artemide Sati. And when I, after, three, after nine days of comatose, I, I flew back to the Philippines and the same, I gathered the whole members of the family to pray intensely for, through the intercession of Blessed Artemide Sati. And it's a miracle that happened that my brother is uh, well, very well now. After when we left the hospital, after uh, two days, he just woke up and like before, is very well now. And we're still waiting at the moment for the approval of the, the case of the canonization of Blessed Artemide Zati. I think uh, only one thing I would like to encourage the brothers to be more, to, me, to encourage you also to, to be more optimistic of your vocation. The, I would like to, to give you this line, which I learned from one brother in the Philippines that he told us that the extraordinary thing in us, brother, is that we are ordinary. Brother Obed, who is the guide in the catacombs of San Calisto in Rome, Italy, at the moment, is one of the most experienced guides in English already many years. So this is a good example which may inspire us. Now we go to the province groups. We have the handouts, uh, handout sharing question day one groups. Uh, the few points with three questions of Father Ivo are on your paper, which is in your folder. Uh, take it easy, it is not to report to somebody, it's for us, no? So, the leaders of province groups, they check where is the place they gather. If it is not clear, you just check here or in the information. And uh, 
the launch is the arrival point, okay? So there is no reporting here. All the specific province groups and Vietnam, one, two, three, four, they meet in their specific places. If you have any question, don't hesitate to approach. Let the, let's have a good sharing about Venerable Simon Struji, Siman Struji.